this presentation was uh, recorded earlier, please reference anything that I'm saying here to uh, online. So anything that I'm telling you, you should be doing from home. Okay, this is project two, part two. This is where all the color samples are going to go. I'm going to show you what we are going to do with all of these paint chips. By now, you should have your primaries, secondaries, and tertiaries. Using a cutting mat and your X-Acto knife, cut all of the chips into one inch squares. This will take some time. In the end, you should end up with about 36 separate chips, 12 colors multiplied by the shade, the pure hue, and the tint. Take your piece of crescent board and measure it out to 10 and a half inches by eight and a quarter inches. Be careful to cut it out on a bigger board and save your scrap. We'll be doing a bunch more of these color wheels. The first thing that you will need to do is to find the center of the board. This is actually quite easy. Simply place a straight edge from one corner of your board to the other. Lightly mark some place in the middle of that line with a pencil. Do it again from the opposite corner and again strike a very light line directly over the one that you just drew from the opposite corner. This is the center of the board where the two lines cross. Using a compass, draw an arc out from the center at one and a quarter inches. This will become the innermost of th the three lines that you will need to position your chips against. We will be doing this a number of times, but on this one you will need three lines. In order to make the next two lines, using a scale ruler, simply draw a line from the arc that you just created at one inch and two inches. This will then become the marks for the next two arcs. So then, draw the second one, and then the third. You should have something on a blank piece of illustration board that looks something like this. Three concentric circles that are guides for where to position your paint chips. Now you can begin positioning your chips using a glue stick. Start with the primaries and the secondaries, and then we'll get to the tertiaries. Using the symbol of a conventional clock, you should begin by positioning your red chip at the very top, or the 12 o'clock position. Next, blue will come in at 8 o'clock, and finally, yellow at 4 o'clock. Now put in the secondaries directly in between these positions. Purple at 10 o'clock, green at 6 o'clock, and orange at 2 o'clock. You should now have something that looks remarkably like this. Your paint chips may not look exactly like this, but the point is to come up with something that appears to be a system of pure hues with shades on the innermost line and tints on the outermost line. When you get all these positioned, be sure to go ahead and neatly label your paint chip color wheel as indicated here. And finally, put your name in the lower left hand corner. Also, in the description in the upper left, indicate the source of where your paint chips came from. This will be helpful to everybody else. Now we'll go ahead and place on the tertiary colors. Given the size of our display board, we will not have room to place the shades of the tertiary color, but that's okay, we'll be using them shortly. So then, go ahead and position your additional chips accordingly with red purple or red violet at 11 o'clock, blue violet or blue purple at 9 o'clock, blue green at 7 o'clock, yellow green at 5 o'clock, yellow orange at three o'clock and finally red orange at one o'clock. You should now have a color wheel that looks something like this. Hopefully you've been careful with your glue stick and your positioning. Again, be sure to put on the description in the upper left hand corner and make sure your name appears in the lower left. Here's a, here's a final copy of the version that I did. Shortly we'll scan these so that you have a digital copy of everything that you're doing. This way, you will have both a physical and a digital version of the projects for this class. This project is going to be due in about two weeks.